If you see the Avengers movie today, don't forget to keep an eye out for Marvel's newest superhero, the Yellow Microjig, maker of the Gripper. Work safer, work smarter. I'm back working on our craft room makeover this week with these awesome storage crates that you can do anything with. I picked up eight of these pine boards. I think they're furring strips. They're three and a half inches, they're about nine centimeters wide. And yeah, they've got knots and some of them are kind of rough, but I think that's okay for a crate. And to make it even simpler, I'm gonna cut all of the pieces to the exact same length. The fence on my miter saw isn't long enough to hook stop blocks on where I need them. So I'm just gonna clamp this board to it. I can measure from that slot the length that I want my boards to be. I'll clamp this board on to use as a stop block. As long as this stop block is in place, I'll be able to get every board the exact same length. I'm gonna cut out the two side pieces for each crate using three quarter or 19 millimeter plywood. If you don't have a table saw, you could just as easily use a circular saw or a jigsaw. I'm gonna use my drill press to make the finger holds on the side pieces. And flip it over and do the other side. Yeah, I can connect the edges of those holes. And I'll cut these out using my jigsaw. I'm using my router to round over the inside edges of this handhold. If you don't have a router, you can just sand those smooth. These all go together pretty easily. I'm gonna start with the bottom and screw everything together using two inch or five centimeter screws. The bottom will be a lot easier if you clamp it into place. That way I can make sure it's flush with the bottom of the side piece. Pre-drilling holes will help prevent the ends of these boards from splitting when I put the screws in. For the whole crate, I'm always going to put on the two end pieces and then just visually center the middle one. Now the rest of these I don't really need to clamp down. I'll do the sides the same way. The bottom slot will completely cover that edge. Oops. I can't put a screw right there because it's running into this screw going that way. So I think I'll put the screw over here. And that's all there is to a crate that's really sturdy. So really you could just stop the project there if you wanted to and you'd have a bunch of really cool crates. You could stack them however you like. If you're looking for a woodworking project to generate some income, you might consider making some crates. They're really popular right now and I've seen lesser quality crates, thinner wood, usually stapled together, about this size, and they sell for $20 each. I'm pretty sure you could sell one of these for $30 or more. I want these crates to look like they've been around a little while, so I'm going to give them a coat of dark stain. When you're using stain, it's always important to wipe off all the excess after you've applied it, otherwise it'll never dry. I found some vintage fruit crate labels online and I manipulated them a little bit in Photoshop to give them an aged background. And I'll just cut them out. I'll spray on a thick coat of spray adhesive. I 
I'll seal those labels into place and protect the rest of the crate with a few coats of spray lacquer. Since we have so many bright colors in this craft room, this darker bookcase is gonna add a nice contrast. I'm gonna start with the bottom crate and hook one side into a stud and then the other side I'm gonna use a hollow wall anchor. I had a couple things I can stack up to help me balance this one. That should be plenty sturdy to hold a bunch of books and magazines. The rest of them will go on easy. Thank you for joining me this week on Woodworking for Mere Mortals. This project is part of our craft room transformation series. If you enjoyed this project, you'll probably really enjoy watching the cabinet build. Making your own cabinets like this is a lot easier than you might think. And check out the playlist of all the craft room transformation projects. I hope there's a few there to give you some ideas for your own space. These would be a lot of fun for an apartment, I think. You can just stack them up. They sort of remind me of those old album crates. Remember you put records in them? If you enjoyed this video and you're new to Woodworking for Mere Mortals, please take a moment to subscribe. I post new, simple woodworking projects every Friday on this channel. And if what I do here is valuable to you, please check out my Patreon page. I'd love to earn your support. And speaking of Patreon, I'd like to acknowledge a few folks who are supporting the show over there, as well as a few folks from the old Subbable site. Like Kevin Maxson. And Paul Wilmore. Keith Purdy. Nathan Helix Carline. Hey, we just Skyped yesterday. Hey, Steve Batista. Hey, Dan McLeod, we talked on the phone. Just for the record, it is really hot today and I don't have air conditioning in this 1976 truck. Bill Kramer. Hello, Kramer. Oh wait, I guess that was Newman, wasn't it? Bruce Allen. Hey, Johnny Delgado, what's up? Mike Fuchs. I'm heading into the supermarket now. By the way, did you know that plastic bags are illegal here so I have to carry my own? Patty Rabbit, look, there's a wall of tortilla chips for Cinco de Mayo. Still too early to eat my own tomato, so I have to buy these tasteless ones. Well, David Smith, what do you think? Are you an avocado fan? Thanks all of you guys, really appreciate your support. <laughs> now I better put the phone down before I get a ticket.